Hey, Tony from Bikeberry here. So I was working on this four-stroke and I noticed I had a little bit of a leaky carb. So I thought, well, now's a good time to uh, walk you through how to take it apart and see what's wrong. So even before you take it off, as a first solution, when you notice gas, let's say, pouring out of the filter area, is that means that the bowl is getting full and the needle in there is not stopping the flow from coming out and feeding basically the carburetor. So don't even take it off yet. What you wanna do is you just wanna take a screwdriver and tap on the bowl. A lot of times that'll knock the little flip lever loose and it might fix it. So do that a few times, bang it on both sides, start it up, see what happens. Um, and see if it continues to leak or not. If that doesn't fix it, our next step is to remove the carburetor. For tools, you're gonna to want an eight millimeter socket, and I use a swivel, because trying to get in this frame, it's usually pretty tight when you're loosening it, it'll be back there somewhere, so this really helps. Just so I could show you easier, um, I kept the whole assembly together here, okay? Because it's kind of hard to get into on this tight frame. So you can see that all the layers are gasket, Spacer, gasket, carburetor, gasket, air filter holder. So when it's on the bike, of course, you're gonna open the air filter holder. I'll just remove it to get it out of the way. Pull the filter out and you're gonna loosen that bolt and that bolt. You can see that it threads all the way through everything. So once you have it off the engine, just start peeling away the layers and pull the bolts out. Gasket, that's the orientation over here on the back side. Gasket, that's the orientation. Spacer, another gasket. And you got your carb. So just to keep things from leaking, I just connected this drain tube to this other fitting. That's why I did that. So what typically happens, because your tank is much higher than your carburetor, is that fuel is coming down, the bowl is filling up, and it's not actuating the float to close the valve that keeps it from flowing through the carburetor. Let's go deeper. First, I'll just take a shop rag. Then we have, let's see here, a 10 millimeter. Fits on the bottom of that. It's probably gonna leak everywhere because it's full of fuel from my testing. You can see that there's a little rubber O-ring on there. Pay attention to that, make sure it's okay. Take your bowl off. See there's some fuel in there, so I'll dump it out through the bottom like that. Let's look inside the float here and see what's going on. Notice there's an O-ring here. You wanna make sure it stays you know, in that groove. Um, but it's pretty simple. What you're gonna do is just take this pin out. I like to keep a uh, parts tray right below so that we can get all the parts in there. I'm going to pull this out and this is where it all happens. So this is your float and this is your pin. It has a rubber tip on it and a spring. Sometimes what you can do, you're going to slide it out. You don't want to lose the spring so you got to be careful. See how that spring is sprung? Let's fix that. Okay, it's all nice and shapely now. I think it's good. So you can see the little hole down in there where the needle goes up against. Now, on a used carburetor, so if you've been running a while, there's a lot of times it's just junk that's caught in there that's not allowing the needle to press against the hole and seal it up. That's where you want to take the little parts cleaner and clean it out. Another thing to do is inspect the bowl. You want to make sure that there's no cracks on it. Sometimes as it gets used, it could get cracked where they've assembled it here and it'd be full of gas, so then it won't float. It's too heavy. So what you can do is take some JB Weld and put it over the spot that's cracked really thin. You don't want to go too heavy and gloppy because then it won't float, it'll be too heavy. So. Uh, check for cracks and apply a thin bead of JB Weld so that it'll float. 
Once you've made the necessary repair, let's put our uh, needle back in. Just like that. Before we reassemble it, let me walk you through, you know, the flow of the fuel. So the fuel comes in over here from your tank. And then there's a little bit hole in the back there that it fills up the bowl. The float then floats up. Then this hinge point here and that pin goes up inside there and plugs the hole, stops the fuel. If that's not working properly, then it won't stop fuel and it'll pour right out your intake. So after we've inspected our bowl, made the necessary repairs, we've checked our spring, we see everything's working well, our needle looks good, we've cleaned it out, then let's go ahead and reassemble it. One thing I like about these needles, they have like these uh, ribs or fluting on the edges of them that keep it centered inside the fitting. We'll get this pushed all the way down in here, place our pin, Let's look at this mechanism. You can see that it pushes that little guy up in there. And if it's sticking, then it may not work properly. You want it to freely move. So when you're smacking the side of it, that's what it's doing is it's knocking that loose because it probably got stuck down. Seems good. Now to reassemble it, make sure you can see the shape of this where you know your drain valve is. That's going to go where the hinge posts are. You make sure your gasket is in there. Get this the correct orientation. Just like that. Take your bolt with your little gasket on it. Tighten it up. Yep, after you snug the bowl on there, you should be good to go. It should work freely because you saw how it worked. Uh, you can open up your valve and see if fuel spills out. Beyond that, if fuel is still spilling out, that means the needle is misshapen or the fitting that it fits into is uh, damaged or something like that that's just not going to seal. You're better off just ordering another carburetor. Uh, this is a pretty inexpensive hobby, so new carburetors aren't that big a deal. Um, yeah, but that should get you going because that's really how it all works. And so I hope this helped you out. I hope that helps you understand how the carb works. I'm going to get this back together and we'll get her on the road. So the next video you see of this will be on the road. Like and subscribe. Comment below if you've had this problem. If you've got other solutions that I need to know about. Let's roll.